Hey crafty friends, this is Chelsea. For today's video, I want to play with some mixed media techniques and create some beautiful layers on my pages, but without adding a lot of bulk. I love the look of interesting layers, but I don't really want to add a ton of dimension and I would rather keep them fairly flat so I can fit more layouts in one album. I'm going to be scrapbooking these cute photos of my daughter learning to ride her scooter. She's been kind of opposed to learning to ride anything with wheels, but she got a scooter for her birthday and she's really been enjoying it. I think it also helps that she has a way to bring her bear along. And uh, I want to get these on a page for her because I think she'll really enjoy that. This photo here is actually a four by eight enlargement. These ones are four by six, and I think I'm going to cut them down a little bit narrower and either use three or four on the page. I wanna create a watercolor background on my layout. So to do that, I am using the Vicki Booten White Foundations Mixed Media Art Paper. I love this paper. It's super thick, but it's also smooth. So unlike watercolor paper that can be sort of tricky to stamp on, this is nice and smooth for stamping and it holds up really well to watercolors, gels, texture paste, things like that. And the few times that I've used it in the past, I've been really happy with the results. I'm also going to probably pull in some of this embossing paste from Stampin' Up. I haven't used this one yet, so I wanted to play. I'm going to probably bring in some stencils or texture stamps, but I haven't pulled those in yet because I haven't decided what I want to use. I was also thinking of using this sketched butterfly set from Stampin' Up. It has beautiful detail, and I thought these would make really nice embellishments for this page. Also, the Changing Leaves set. This is a hybrid set, so it has a 3D embossing folder with a die that coordinates so you can cut and emboss at the same time. And I thought these leaves would make a really nice embellishment for this page. So I'm thinking like leaves and butterflies as opposed to flowers. And then I also pulled the Gnomes for Summer scrapbooking set. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this one, but I thought I might like some of the little summer icons, maybe the bike, even though this isn't biking, but it's kind of, you know, in that same theme. So we'll see about that one. Then to add color, I'm going to bring in my gelatos. I haven't played with these in quite a while. This is what I'm gonna to use to create all the color on the base pages of my layout. These are water-based gel sticks that are loaded with pigment and they dissolve with water. So you can just scribble them on and then use a wet brush to help spread the color around. You could get the similar look with watercolor paints or watercolor crayons if you don't have these. The inspiration for this background came from a course called Fresh Techniques for Artful Layouts by Vilna Furstenberg that I took on Craftsy, which is the sponsor of today's video. Craftsy is an online learning community for makers and an excellent online resource for all things creative. They have classes in over 20 categories, including quilting, sewing, crochet, painting, photography, cake decorating, and so many more. I've been wanting to play more with mixed media elements in my scrapbooking again, and Vilna's class was the perfect jumpstart for that. I love how the projects are broken down into easy to follow steps so that no matter what your skill level, you can be successful. In this class, there are even bonus SVGs included, and I'm going to use some of those on my pages today. The selection of topics on Craftsy is so varied, I have no doubt there's something for everyone in the library of over 2,000 classes. Next up on my list is a class called Flat Lay Your Life, and hoping to level up my Instagram photo game. When I'm taking pictures of my artwork and creating flat lays, they could definitely use some help to become a little bit more interesting. I also love decorating cakes and I've been getting more into it as Isabella's been getting older. So when I saw the class called Buttercream in Bloom, I got really excited. I've always wanted to take a class on how to make buttercream flowers. Since you guys know I love flowers, but I just never made the time to go and do it. The thing I like about Craftsy is I can sit and do these classes in my pajamas. If you want to explore the Craftsy community and build some new skills, the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description box will get a full year of premium membership for only $1.49. That is an amazing deal. Thank you to Craftsy for sponsoring this video. I decided to start off my layout on the base using colors from my daughter's shirt, her helmet, and her scooter. So I'm using the gelatos in buttercream, 
mango, bubblegum, and metallic grape. I love how you can just scribble these colors down, super messy, you don't have to be really careful with it, and then just blend it out with a wet brush. I did make sure to rinse out my brush in between so that I wasn't blending the colors together too much. Now that my layout is dry, I'm going to lay out my photos and just figure out where I wanna put everything. My inspiration layout was just a one page, but I wanted to extend this into a two page since that's mostly what I do. And I think I want to trim these down. I'm just not sure how many photos I want to put on here. I love all her little expressions. This one, her eyes aren't even open, which it's kind of hard to see because of the shadow from uh, or her helmet, but I just loved the little smile on her face. She was so happy and proud of herself. So I think I'm still going to scrapbook that one. I was experimenting with cutting these down and I made this one three by six. So I think that's what I'm gonna do with the other ones and then just decide if I want to use three of them or four of them. I'm trimming a half inch off of each side or off of the two sides. So I end up with a three by six. So technically I could fit all of these across. I'm just not sure if that's what I want to do. All right, so here's what it looks like with the four. And I was thinking probably, probably want to mat them because this one has a white border from how I cut it out. And then I could layer those up like that. Or if I take one away and maybe just use all the different pictures of her from in front, I could do that and then still have some room for either some embellishing around this corner or adding some journaling in here somewhere. I do think I like the look of the odd number of the three. And if I add one more, it's just maybe a little bit too full. I sort of run out of room and then I don't see this detail, all my brush marks from blending out the gelatos. I think that's what I'll do. I'll go with the three so it's just a little bit more balanced gives me a little bit more space and I probably will stagger these a little bit play with how I want to overlap them if I want to angle them a little bit since these are kind of movement photos I think having them sort of staggered or tilted a little bit will convey that movement now I also have this title this was one of the SVGs that Velna had in her class it says she who is brave is free and I thought that is perfect. I'm tempted to just leave this white. I could cut it out of another color. I could even do it out of black, but I'm not sure that I want the heaviness of black. I want to keep this kind of bright and light. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'll just leave it white. So now that we have a plan of kind of how things are going to be laid out, I'm going to map my photos and then I want to start bringing in a little bit of texture with some modeling paste and also some background stamping, maybe a little bit of text stamping to fill in this background and add some more layers to it. Now my photos are matted with white. You can see my page has a slight curl to it, but it's very slight. And once I get these into my album, they are gonna flatten out beautifully. I decided before I start adding more to the background, I want to figure out my embellishments. So I'm using the Changing Leaves Hybrid Folder with some vellum. I think this is maybe Recollections. It's fairly thin vellum. You can see how the dye just kind of nests into there. It's not clicking in, it's not stuck in there. You can also use it separately, but I'm just gonna fold, close my folder, run it through my Big Shot, and then you can see it just cuts out beautifully. And that embossing on the vellum looks gorgeous. So much detail. Last month in the Creative Design Team membership, Julie actually did a class with this folder and cut all kinds of specialty paper with it, and they turned out gorgeous. So that's what made me think of using vellum with this folder. If you guys are interested in seeing all the cool classes that we have inside the Creative Design Team membership, we are actually opening to new members for only one week, starting tomorrow, August 12th. So if you're interested, you can find the link below, but it will not be active until tomorrow if you're watching this the day I publish it. These leaves are so pretty. I didn't want to waste any of them. So these outside ones don't cut out with the die, but they are super easy to just grab your scissors and fussy cut them out. 
So I thought I would save all the pieces that I can that would make sense. And it's always nice to have lots of options when you are doing clusters. I'm just playing with all my pieces first, figuring out how many leaves I need to die cut, where everything's going to go. I know I wanna have three main areas of embellishments and I'm using up every last piece of vellum that I can because a lot of the leaves are hidden underneath anyways. So it doesn't really matter if the ends of them aren't perfect or if there's pieces missing. You can kind of hide that when you tuck them under the photos. Now I'm going to move on to my butterflies. I decided to use just plain white cardstock. I want to keep my colors fairly neutral. I want to let the background shine and keep all the embellishments light and neutral. So I'm using my anti-static pouch over top of my cardstock so that the static won't hang on to all the embossing powder. And then Versamark on top of my stamps. These stamp beautifully. The detail on them are amazing. At first, when I joined Stampin' Up, I wasn't sure about going back to having cling stamps, but when you see the gorgeous details on here, they are stunning, and I'm so glad I picked up this set. I'm using the Princess Gold Embossing Powder from Ranger, because that's what I have in my stash, but you could use any gold embossing powder and I'm catching all the extra in a coffee filter. I find it works really good for catching everything and then it's easy to fold up and just funnel back into the jar. Coffee filters are cheap, easy to find, and I have one stack that has lasted me a very long time. Once I have all the excess powder removed, now I can just let my heat gun warm up and start melting the powder. You can start from the underside if you're worried about some of it blowing off, but it seemed to be on there really good. So I'm just starting at one end, moving my way along, and when I tilt it in the light, you can see that beautiful shine from the gold powder. I always tend to hold my paper above my work surface. I find that it just heats up a lot faster that way, and then I don't have to worry about accidentally melting something that's on my desk. Now I'm just lining up the coordinating dies. I love that these cut really close. There's only a tiny white border that's left around the edges. And I like to put my dies in place with washi tape, even though I'm using a magnetic plate, because when you're doing multiples, sometimes they just end up shifting and I like to make sure they're cut right the first time. I've gone ahead and laid everything out where I want it. Now I'm adding this other little like subtitle, which was an SVG from Velna's class as well. And I'm pulling out some of my stamps from my stash. I love these kind of stamps that just have different kinds of textures. This is perfectly imperfect patterns. And I love these little sketchy patterns here. We got like hearts and dashes and dots, as well as all those pretty watercolor patterns. This Dream Maker set, it's my favorite text background because it's super sketchy. And then also this sort of like grungy line design. I think these are gonna be perfect for stamping on the background of my page. I'm also going to pull in some stencils, which have some nice kind of geometric type of patterns. I wanted something that wasn't going to take away from my page, not be too distracting or too busy. And these ones from the Dream Maker collection actually work perfectly. Just simple designs that add some visual texture and keep things interesting. I also grabbed some of my Close to My Heart Retired Inks, Pewter and Royal. I wanted to keep this a little bit softer, kind of monochromatic, so the purple is getting stamped on top of the purple, and I thought a gray would be better than black. So I'm, I wanna add interest, but I don't want it to be distracting from the rest of the page. Just subtle things that add and build on each other without taking over. Now I did decide to just leave everything on my page and move it as I need to stamp there. So you see a lot of me sliding my photos up and down and all around. It probably would have been a little bit easier to just take a pencil and add some markings around the edges so that I knew where the photos were going. I've done that before. It didn't even cross my mind. It's so funny. I can know the tips and tricks to make my life easier. Do I remember them? Rarely. <laughs> rarely. So yes, I am just kind of pulling up here and there. I did end up getting a little bit of ink on some of my photo mats, but it was fine. It was, I think, pretty much all hidden by the embellishments anyways. 
I'm using the pewter ink to stamp that beautiful text stamp and I want to make it purposely uneven so some of them I am using like the full strength of the ink some I'm stamping off and kind of moving around keep stamping it until I get all the ink off it just kind of depends on what I feel like and what I think that spot needs I wanted to make sure it didn't get too dark and too bold and draw too much attention but you can see I'm just working my way around the page, moving things as I need to. There you can see that second generation where it just kind of gets lighter, it's offset a little bit. This does not need to be perfect. You just have fun, kind of go a little bit crazy. And if you're using stamps like this that are already kind of distressed, you're going to get a very natural kind of organic look to it anyways. Now I realized I needed one more color. I wanted something that more closely matched the orange and the yellow colors of the gelatos. So I reached for tangerine and that was a really good match. It's just slightly darker so you can see the texture that it creates but it's not standing out too much. It blends in well. I decided to take this all the way around the top of my photo grouping here. It's kind of like adding layers of paper like a photo mat but it is stamping and I love how this turned out and just adds that little bit extra bit of fun. I went ahead and did that on the left page as well off camera and now I decided to shift gears a little bit. I had planned to use the texture paste on the stencils but I decided instead I wanted to use paint. I'm actually using distress paint because that's what I have on my desk handy and I like how they dry really fast and really smooth. So I'm using a little makeup wedge here and you want to get most of the paint off of it. You can see I'm kind of pouncing off to the side on my little piece of craft mat here. And if you add too much paint all at once, it's going to be very blobby, not crisp. So you only want a small amount of paint left on your sponge when you go to apply it. I also checked the back of my stencils when I was moving on to a new area to make sure I didn't have a bunch seeping underneath because sometimes that happens if you get too much paint on the top side, it'll seep underneath and then you go put it in a new spot and you kind of mess it up. So I am just going carefully, making just kind of sections of this pattern. And because it worked so well with the stamping, having the purple kind of on the purple and orange on the top part, I decided that that's what I'm gonna do. Have the purple on the pink and purple section. I think this is shaded lilac. And then I am going to actually end up mixing up an orange. I had a bottle of Spice Marmalade Distress paint, but it was all dried out. So these paints are quite old and it is my goal to try and use up some of the stuff on in my stash that is getting old and will be drying up. So I am just trying to use up what I have handy. If you want some more dimension through the stencil, you could definitely take the texture paste, mix it with a little bit of paint or ink or whatever you like to color it with and then apply it through the stencil with a palette knife. Now here you can see my orange is not the right tone. It's way too red. So I decided to add some white to it and then also add some yellow. This is mustard seed and I wasn't sure how much to add. So I'm just adding little bits at a time and then mixing it with my sponge. And I am kind of testing it as I go to try and get close to that really light orange and yellow color. This ripe persimmon, which is the orange, was very pigmented so it took quite a bit of mixing to get it down to what I wanted it to. You can see I'm testing it on a scrap piece and every time I have another shade I just hold it up there and see if it's close. I keep putting my title back on just for placement to make sure that I'm getting the stenciling where I want it and for the most part I am keeping the stenciling over top of where I have the watercolor in the background. It can stick over here and there but for the most part I want to keep it in the center area and maintain that white border around the outside. Now same thing here, I'm making sure to dab off my sponge onto my mat before I go in so they end up with nice crisp stenciling. If you're creating a double page layout, it is nice to have elements like this that are in the background kind of bridging between the two pages. But you wanna make sure you line them up very even before you start. And actually you could washi tape these two together and washi tape them to the table in order to make sure that they don't move and they line up perfectly. I wasn't too worried about it. I just kind of held them in place and went ahead and did my sponging. 
and I love this kind of haphazard, uneven look to it. I added a little bit more stenciling to the far right side, and then I decided I wanted some splatter. I tried several different things to see if I had a pink that matched, but I just have no hot pink in my stash. So what I ended up doing was taking the gelato, scraping some of it off onto a block. I could have also done it on my mat, but I wanted to be able to move the block around. And I used my little Cricut spatula there to like squish it down and mix it with water until I got like a runny consistency that I could splatter. Now you really want to be careful with this because it does tend to go everywhere when you're splattering. It would be good to put it inside a splatter box, but that's a little bit harder to film. So I just did it on my craft mat here and I did end up getting some splatter on my large photo. Of course it was the large photo. So I ended up having to reprint it, recut it down, but it worked out in the end. Just a warning to you to uh, make sure you move your photos far away. Now you can see I got one large blob and I was deciding if I should just add more large blobs, but instead I just took a baby wipe and wiped it up. It's one nice thing about using a water-based medium, it's easier to clean it up. Now I'm going ahead and starting to stick things down. I'm not going to show you the whole process of adhering everything, but I did leave gaps in my adhesive. So anywhere that I knew I wanted to tuck things under, I just made sure I didn't put adhesive on that side. And then I just used my Barely Arts glue, added a little bit of glue. These leaves are really light. You don't need to cover them with glue. Just a little bit on the ends is enough to hold them in place. It's so fun to watch these pages come together and take shape and to see how interesting they are to look at with so much texture and layers to them but really not much dimension. They are going to lay nice and flat in my albums and not be all bumpy and lumpy. The two things I did decide to add some dimension to were the titles and the butterflies. So for the titles, I actually cut them three times. So the big one on the left and the little play title on the right are layered with three layers of cardstock. I didn't want to have them on foam, but I wanted to give them some substance so they didn't kind of bend with the page. If the page was kind of curved from the moisture, I didn't want them bending with it. I wanted to give them some heft to stand up on the page and be like a really sturdy title. So those are layered, but that still doesn't add a ton of dimension. And then the butterflies, I'm actually going to add some curve to their wings. I like doing this with my butterflies where I just bend up each wing and then just gently curl it downwards. So the body is flat and easy to glue and then the wings have a little bit of curve. These will flatten out a bit in my albums but they still give them a little bit of shape. You could add foam tape under the wings if you want to keep that curve a little bit more and not have them flatten out a bit in your albums but I decided I would just do it this way and they can flatten out a bit that doesn't bother me. Now I'm taking my tea ruler and a pencil and I am just drawing in some journaling lines. I will tell you, these pencil lines do not erase. Maybe you wanna do it in pen or just let the pencil lines be there. They don't bother me, they're quite light. But just so you know, on top of this gelato, they did not want to erase. And it was actually starting to smudge my pen. So I went very gently at first and I'm so glad I did. I didn't just jump in and start like wildly erasing because I would have had a huge mess on here. I already had a little bit of whoops and you're gonna see that right away here because I got all the way through, my journaling was looking good, it was straight, I don't think I misspelled anything. And then I got to the end and I'm like, oh, I have a little gap here, I should add the date. And so I checked the date, wrote it in, and boom, it's crooked. Oh, I was so angry right here. So now it's time to problem solve. And so what I did is I went over to my embellishments. I actually have a bunch of them out right now because I am working on some new embellishment storage. And this, it works so well for me because I was able to find these gold rimmed labels and they work perfectly to just add a little bit of something. Of course, I had to add them in three spots so it looks like it was on purpose. I didn't want that one to just look lonely like I was covering something. And this one here that says, you are amazing in every single way, is actually a stamp from that Changing Leaves set. And then I use this Captured Happiness from Close to My Heart and this little My Cutie stamp to stamp on this other label over here. I think that worked out great and I love the added touch of gold. 
it definitely ended up being a happy accident. I decided I wanted to add a little bit more metallic, a little bit more bling. These are adhesive backed metallic gems. They might be a new favorite. I love how they are shaped. They really catch the light and they come in three different metallic colors. And I think they are the perfect addition to this page. Just add a little bit more twinkle to my clusters. Now, the one thing I did notice is that they are quite low, which is nice, but they kept sliding under my nails. So I had to use both hands to get them applied properly. So here is a close up look. This is where you really get to see all of that texture and pattern and interest. I am so happy with how these pages turned out. I, they were so much fun to create and I think they're so much fun to look at. And I think they really capture the fun of this afternoon of when she really got the hang of how to ride her scooter. There's lots of movement and playfulness in this page. I hope you enjoyed watching this process. Now, if you're ready for some more inspiration, check out this video that YouTube thinks you should watch. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you again very soon.